Hi, this is Matthew Robert Payne. This is uh, the book called He's Redeeming Love. This is chapter 52, and this is called Aftercare Housing. Uh, as I uh, worked uh, in the temping agency, I was having fun doing uh, two days a week work. Uh, it came time where my caseworker approached me uh, one day and, uh, at home and she said that they had um, a position that had come up with uh, an organisation called Aftercare and these uh, people uh, housed, uh, looked after and housed people who had mental illnesses, who had come out of the hospital system and uh, they gave you accommodation uh, which was a temporary from six months to 18 months accommodation uh, which would prepare people to uh, transition into uh, government housing and uh, government housing allows you to get uh, a one bedroom uh, apartment for $80 a week and uh, so it's very cheap, it's about half of the market rent in any place and so I moved into an aftercare, I went for an interview and uh, passed the interview and I moved into an aftercare place and they started to teach you living skills, they started to teach you how to clean and how to cook for yourself and how to do your grocery shopping and how to keep your apartment clean and uh, so I did that. Um, I cheated in a way that as I was working uh, in uh, jobs I paid my roommate to do the cleaning, uh, to do my cleaning every second week and uh, I paid him some money to do that and uh, the aftercare counsellor found out about it and I got in trouble and she said you to learn to do cleaning yourself and you have to do it yourself and you can't pay your roommate to do it. I remember one time I stayed up for uh, two days and two nights and I was out for two days straight and uh, um, the aftercare people found out that I'd been out uh, for two days and had two days up without sleep and they alerted the mental health people and I had mental health people coming around for two weeks, a crisis team making sure that I was okay. Um, apparently when you stay up for two nights in a row it gets you high, it gets you manic and uh, I, I have done it hundreds of times since uh, the, when I want to experience uh, a bit of joy and a bit of uh, peace and uh, enjoyment um, I stay up for a night and uh, do things and stay up for the rest of the day and stay up the next night sometimes and it just carries you through with this uh, manic high a friend of mine says that, that the manic high uh, is better than any drugs and I have to uh, confess that it is uh, addictive, it is uh, something that's uh, really enjoyable, you can be very creative when uh, you're, you're manic and uh, you can uh, have a really enjoyable time and uh, still as a person who's lived with mental illness for close on 20 years I'm still a person who does some naughty things and stays up um, uh, one day uh, and one night or sometimes two nights. Uh, the key to staying up is uh, being busy and if you stay busy and occupied and keep your mind busy uh, you can stay up for a couple of nights and a couple of days and anyway uh, one time my roommate uh, gave me up and said that I'd been up for two nights and I hadn't been home and it took two weeks worth of visits before they uh, released me and didn't put me into hospital. So um, I continued whilst I was in the aftercare place to uh, do my temp work and uh, I found uh, a, a job at uh, Sydney University this time and I had a, a job where I uh, secured a position as a salad hand which is like an assistant chef uh, or a chef's assistant as someone who uh, does almost the same as a chef's job but doesn't get paid as much 
and so uh, I really enjoyed uh, my time when I got to work with uh, Hans, H-A-N-S and Graham um, and they worked uh, at Sydney University. I was uh, third in line for the salad hand jobs. They had one guy that if they needed uh, only one salad hand for their function um, to be prepared they used to hire this guy. If they needed two salad hands they'd hire that guy and they'd hire a girl that was very good and uh, if they needed three salad hands they'd hire me. So I didn't always get a job with Sydney University every week but uh, I got regular work with them which was fantastic and it was really good to be working in functions. I always wanted to be a chef and it was really good to be doing something other than washing dishes to actually be preparing meals and serving meals and uh, doing all sorts of jobs that a chef would do it was amazing sort of work and made me really happy. Working with Hans and Graham was a terrific time and really enjoyable and I was really enjoying myself uh, having a great time uh, working with them. Um, one time I was down at the shopping centre and getting some groceries and I really needed some work. I needed to pay a bill or something. I, I really needed some work and I was praying uh, for God to get me some work and in the middle of my prayer just as I started to pray uh, for more work my mobile phone rang. I answered the mobile phone and it was the lady on the phone asking me if I could work the next day and uh, that she was desperate and could I please do a job for her and uh, before I could even finish the prayer uh, the prayer was answered and um, there's a verse in the Bible that says before I will answer you before you even uh, call to me and uh, it's an amazing scripture and it's so true and it worked in my life um, I never uh, had the ability to save money. Uh, as, as fast as I earned money, uh, I spent my money on sex workers. It's, um, it's a sad thing. Uh, it's a sad thing indeed to live a life uh, addicted to sex workers. Uh, um, sometimes I seem to uh, in this testimony, in this uh, book, I seem to boast in a way that I had this uh, tremendous lifestyle of sleeping with all these women and uh, seeing uh, new girls every time I slept with one and having this exciting time. But um, getting stuck in the, um, in the jaws of death, getting stuck in the clutches of an addictive lifestyle is something that really takes your spirit from you and uh, really causes a lot of sadness and uh, so as much as I worked even though I enjoyed my work and I enjoyed working at Sydney University with Hans and Graham I certainly didn't enjoy the fact that I was always uh, without money as fast as I earned money I was spending it and uh, the more I worked, the more I spent on sex, and that was simply that. So what brings a person uh, to a lifestyle of uh, paying for sex and uh, always uh, going into uh, sex workers to uh, get something for their life? What sort of sad life do you have to live to uh, be a person like me? God bless.